Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about a way to play all those newly available Atomus Wave Dreamcast ports on your Mighty Dreamcast without any modification whatsoever. It can all be done for just $9. Let's check it out. Now, before I go any further, I definitely need to thank Megavolt85. He's the genius over at the Dreamcast Talk Forums who's been doing all the work porting over all these amazing Thomas Wave games. Uh, without him, there would be no option for this to even happen. So, thank you. Okay, so this is the little device that's going to make this all possible. What this is is it's a SD memory card reader for the serial port on the back of your Dreamcast. So what that means is you do not have to modify your Dreamcast system in any way. It leave everything intact. You just plug this in the rear of your console to the serial port. Now there are multiple different versions of these out there, but they all work the same, okay? Uh, they all come with a little CD. Now, the CD is, is it's not really all the software you need to get it going. This was kind of the learning curve I had to deal with when I got my adapter in the mail. But what this CD does is it brings you up to a boot screen that will then let you select from a number of different apps to run. Now, you have to have the files for that application on your SD card. So... Here's the program we're going to be using to do this. The program is called Dream Shell, and we have to get those files onto your SD memory card. Now, Dream Shell is a, basically an operating system for your Dreamcast, much like Windows for your computer. Um, and that's what's going to be able to let us run the software on your Dreamcast. Now, there's also another program called Retro Dream. And I'm going to try to explain this as best as possible without making it confusing. What Retro Dream is, is it's basically a front end for Dream Shell, meaning it's a different graphical interface. That's what we're primarily going to be using. But when you get Retro Dream, it has both together. They're in one package, Dream Shell and Retro Dream, since Retro Dream uses part of Dream Shell to work. So... Anyways, you can see here in the video, here's Retro Dream booting up. And I've got all the games sorted out here. You can see nice artwork as I flip through them. Um, there's a number of different settings that have to be put in for each one of these games to be able to run. Now that took me some time to figure out, but luckily I was able to find a good amount of that information uh, also on the Dreamcast talk forums that I talked about previously. There's a couple guys there who have been active in this one thread talking about all the various settings that seem to work good for them. I found actually a couple settings that work better for just a few of those games, uh, but we've all kind of been going back and forth with updating what stuff works best, okay? Um, but I'm going to thank those guys here below because without them, this would have taken me a lot more work to set up. Now, I'm going to have a file link in the description that has everything set up and ready for you to go. So you will not actually have to mess with all these memory system settings for any of these games to run. The only setting you might have to change, which I found that was kind of interesting, I read a lot of information from people saying that the async setting for their SD memory card was set at eight for these games to run. But on my end, I couldn't get anything to work at all with that. I had to set the async setting to 16 and everything would boot and work great. So I don't know if it's because of the generic uh, memory card that I'm using or possibly this cheaper serial adapter that I'm using. But either way, things work really good. Just letting you know, you might have to change the async setting, which you should be seeing in the video here, either from 8 or 16, depending on what memory card you are using. Okay, now there's unfortunately one game that cannot be played through Retro Dream, 
And some of you might have noticed that in my list as you were seeing some of the games in the menu. Uh, the game Kenju has to be run in Dream Shell. Now I want to explain to you how to do that. Uh, once you're booted up in Retro Dream, all you have to do is hit Start on your controller, and that'll bring up a menu that will let you launch, um, I think it says Launch Operating System. Just hit A on that, and it'll boot up the, the standard Dream Shell interface. Now, as long as everything saved correctly in the file I uploaded, you should see a Kenju icon right on the desktop there. Just simply move the mouse cursor over to it using your controller and hit A to start the game. Um, for whatever reason, Dream Shell has uh, more customizable options for the memory settings to run games on here, and Retro Dream doesn't have that setting. So, Unfortunately, Kenju has to be done through Dream Shell only. Now, alternatively, you could technically set up all the games to just go through Dream Shell instead of using Retro Dream, but I'm more a fan of the interface for Retro Dream. It just seems a bit more controller friendly. If you were to set up all the icons in Dream Shell, you'd have to keep scrolling through like pages to, to view all your icons as opposed to going up and down in a, an easier view menu. So. That's why I have things set up that way. Now, out of the 26 games available, unfortunately, two of them will not work on the SD card uh, serial port adapter at this time. One of them being Metal Slug 6, and the other one being Extreme Hunting. Now, fortunately, Metal Slug 6 does have a CD image available. So if you're still looking to play that without modifying your system in any way, you can find that CD image, burn that, and play it in your Dreamcast using a disc. There are also a couple other CD uh, images for a few of the other ports available, but some of them are kind of buggy. Some of them have some loading issues here and there. Uh, another one of the ports is supposedly pretty good, but there's only four of them available right now at the time of this recording. So the SD... Uh, card reader for the serial port is really your only option if you want to play all the rest of these games without modifying your system. I should also mention a little bit about how I have the folders set up because there's actually uh, some games that are a bit different than others. There's three light gun games for the uh, Thomas Wave system as well, and they work great on the Dreamcast. I've been able to test them out on a CRT. I've got the, uh, here, hold on. I'm going to check what light guns I got. Uh, the Interact Starfire Light Blaster. Okay, they work very good. No calibration necessary. So that's something great for any of you out there who have been uh, hoping to finally get some other light gun games for the Dreamcast at some point. Uh, then I also have another folder in there uh, that says Tate on it. Those are three games that are designed for a vertical TV. So what I mean by that is to play those, you'd actually have to turn your TV up on end on its side. So you may not want to mess with those. Honestly, those games don't seem all that great anyways. So you're not really missing much with those three. But the uh, main Atomus Wave folder has the majority of the games in there. Now for the rest of this video, I'm just going to show some footage of a bunch of these games working with the SD card adapter because, well, why not? So to summarize, thank you to Megavolt85 for all his work uh, with all these Atomus Wave game ports. Get yourself a serial port SD card adapter for the Dreamcast, download the link in the description, and enjoy playing some new Dreamcast games in 2021.